So I've been playing around with Stage Manager on iPadOS 16 and macOS Ventura public betas, and I'm a bit confused. There's always one standout, surprising new feature at WWDC, and I think this year most people would argue that it was Stage Manager. This new way of multitasking on both macOS and iPadOS aims to solve all of the issues we face when we work with multiple windows and loads of apps. No matter how tired you are as a computer user, you'll inevitably get halfway through the day having opened and left open countless apps and loads of folders. They're just scattered all over the place, like discarded pizza boxes, clothes, shoes, and all the other stuff that ends up in a teenager's bedroom. Sifting through that absolute mess is always massively stress-inducing and a complete waste of your time. At least that's what Craig Federighi had us believe when he showed us Stage Manager back at WWDC in June. But is he right? Well, I've been trying out Stage Manager on both macOS Ventura and iPadOS 16 over the last few weeks. And I'm sorry, Craig, I need some convincing. Before I get started, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. So picture the scene, you're in a coffee shop, you've got your laptop in front of you, you've got the internet up there somewhere, and someone in the corner of the room, without you knowing, is tapping in to your connection and nicking stuff from your laptop. That's a pretty bad day all round. So what you need is a VPN, a virtual private network. NordVPN, I think, is the best one. They basically sit in between your laptop and the internet, and they stop that horrible person nicking your stuff. It's great as well if you're abroad and you want to access your home content, so things like BBC iPlayer. With NordVPN, you can effectively connect to your home country. It's just fantastic. I would not be without NordVPN. It goes onto every single Mac that I have, also my mobile devices. So to try it out and get yourself a completely risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, just click the link in the description. So, Stage Manager. I think it's worth noting right away that I consider myself to be quite an efficient computer user when it comes to the way that I manage apps and Windows. And that might be why Stage Manager isn't quite ticking many boxes for me. For instance, I only leave apps open that I'm actively working on, usually, and I'm obsessed with closing windows that I've finished with. Sometimes that is to my detriment when I have to go back to that window or that folder, but I've just got this thing about closing things down when I'm not using them. Now, Stage Stage Manager, as Craig Federighi showed us in June, assumes that you don't do this. It works on the basis that you keep a ton of stuff open on your Mac or your iPad all of the time, and therefore you need some help sifting through all of that stuff. And it does this by setting aside an area on the left-hand side of the screen, which keeps all of your apps and windows that you've carelessly left open neatly organized. And if any of them have multiple windows within those apps, you can basically see them as what they call piles. I wish they chose a better name than that, but that's what they're called. So basically, if you've got an app that's got several windows within it, it will appear as a kind of stacked group of, or pile of windows on the left-hand side. And you can quickly flick through that to find the one that you want. They have made some odd choices with this. So for instance, split screen apps don't appear in Stage Manager. To get back to those, you have to go into Mission Control or swipe left with a four finger trackpad gesture. I use split screen apps all of the time. It's a really important part of my workflow. And not having them in Stage Manager to easily access was just a bit odd. It was a bit disorienting. I think it was also the first hint that I came across that Stage Manager is creating this kind of odd new paradigm for multitasking, which feels a bit forced. However, it does succeed in making your working environment on your Mac or your iPad considerably tidier and actually a bit less stressful because, again, no matter how tidy you are, you will leave things open. So to have everything grouped nicely on the left-hand side is actually quite nice. But it does reduce the amount of screen estate that you have. So when you have Stage Manager turned on, like I say, it has that left-hand pane where you have your piles and all of your open apps and windows. That reduces how much space you have to play with to the right-hand side, which on bigger screened devices, if you've got a 16-inch MacBook Pro or an iMac, for instance, it's less of a problem, but on smaller laptops, for instance, so on, on a MacBook Air, 
things start to feel a bit cramped. You have to turn it on as well. So Stage Manager is a feature actually that you can find in the control center at the top right hand corner of the screen. Once you've switched it on, Stage Manager then becomes the default way of multitasking in Mac OS or iPad OS until you turn it off again. So clearly, as far as Apple is concerned, Stage Manager isn't a default feature. And that begs one very simple question. Is Stage Manager too much for normal users? I use the word normal quite a lot on this channel and I always feel like I need to explain that it's in no way patronizing or derogatory. I consider myself to be a normal user most of the time. So for instance, if you know exactly where that next app you need is and you know how to get to it very quickly, you'll get on with your jobs much, much faster. And Screen Estate, if you can make the best use of the screen in front of you, you should be more productive. I think the problem for Stage Manager is that we can do all all of that stuff already on both macOS and, okay, not iPadOS, I'll come to that, but certainly with macOS, we can do all of those things and have been able to do all of those things for many, many years. With macOS, I've just never really felt shortchanged when it comes to window management or the ability to switch cleanly between apps. It's always worked for me. Hands up, I have never enjoyed multitasking on the iPad. It's always felt tacked on, like a bit of an afterthought, and it's impossible, I think, to discover by happy accident. I think, you know, to find those little controls to move windows around and do split screen and stuff, you've got to know where they are. You've got to know that it exists, and most people don't. And that's why Stage Manager for the iPad feels a bit more tantalizing, a little bit more exciting. And I have to say straight off the bat that Stage Manager does feel far more at home on the iPad. And I think that's because unlike Mac OS, iPad OS doesn't have years and years, decades in fact, of kind of burned in multitasking behavior. Stage Manager works pretty much identically on iPad OS 16 as it does on Mac OS Ventura. You get the same piles on the left hand side and the introduction finally of resizable windows on the iPad. You still lose screen estate, which is more of an issue on the iPad Air that I'm using. And just like the Mac OS version of Stage Manager, it does need to be turned on if you want to use it. So immediately people need to know it's there. Stage Manager on the iPad does feel like a genuine step forward for iPad OS. But things get really interesting when you connect your iPad to an external display. In fact, everything you thought you knew about the iPad changes immediately. This is why I finally purchased an M1 iPad Air and couldn't wait to slap a paper-like screen protector on there, obviously, link in description, and get it ready for the iPadOS 16 public beta. And when you connect your M1 iPad, it has to be M1 by the way, it doesn't work on any other iPad, that's a whole other topic, we'll talk about that another day, but once you've connected your M1 iPad Air or iPad Pro to an external monitor, like the studio display that I have in here, you suddenly get access to two two separate screens rather than the iPad simply mirroring its own, which is what it's always done and it was always very, very annoying. You can now access an external display properly from an iPad. It isn't perfect and a lot of that is down to beta related bugs and glitches at the moment, which is absolutely understandable. But this way of using an iPad with an external monitor and stage manager does require a serious shift in mindset when it comes to how you use your iPad. So for instance, I found myself hurriedly trying to arrange apps on both screens rather than actually getting work done. It's a bit fiddly. It feels a bit fiddly to move things around on the iPad and on the external display. And as many people have pointed out, you can't drag apps from one to the other. Once they're open on one of those displays, that's where they have to remain. Also, having four apps open at any one time, which you can do. So with two displays, you can have four apps open on the iPad and four apps open on your external display. On the iPad, particularly the iPad Air, it looks a bit daft with four apps. I think three is just, that's pushing it, but that's probably the limit really. It's also worth bearing in mind that Apple gives us a kind of predetermined ways of resizing each of these windows. They're a bit random. Basically, you can't resize them infinitely, not infinitely, but indefinitely like you can on Mac OS. You're kind of restricted to these arbitrary sizes, which is a bit strange. And again, it leads to you messing around with the windows more than getting work done. I think as a concept in general, 
I think stage manager on Mac OS is just trying to fix a problem that isn't there. I think on iPad OS, they're onto something, but there are some serious rough edges that need rounding off. I'm curious though, have you used stage manager? Have you used it on Mac OS? Have you used it on your iPad? Have you connected your iPad to an external display? I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you think to it? Let me know in the comments. And if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video where I talk more about that decision to finally buy an M1 iPad Air.